I want to welcome everybody. I want to uh, thank EIF for organizing that. Um, it has been uh, it, it hasn't been easy to bring blockchain in the European Parliament, but I think uh, we made it. Uh, Pierre, thank you so much for for making this uh, possible. My colleague, uh, who's leading the EIF, Mr. Castillo, and uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, making the time and joining us today. Um, so the debate is Discover Blockchain. Um, we have a lot of MEPs attending and it's very interesting because our speakers now have the mission to educate us because we're starting with legislation, resolution, so it's going to be interesting so that we don't stop the innovation but we will accommodate it. Um, traditional value chains, business models were under stress after the financial crisis. And the weakness of the financial system accelerated the process of disintermediation and, I would say, decentralization. I wouldn't say it's too much against politicians. I would say, though, it, it might disrupt a bit the banking system, the way we know it, at least the intermediaries to the banking system. I was yesterday at an event in Paris with many associations of banks and government. And I would say I was the most positive one. I hope I'm not the exception today. So I, I do believe Bitcoin was just the early manifestation of a new economic idea, which is challenging the monopoly of the state in the issuance of money. The DLT also, distributed ledger technology, that underpin cryptocurrencies, is even wider than blockchain and Bitcoin. But I think we will also have this one uh, addressed and explained by our speakers. We also have smart contracts, contracts of transfer of value without the need of a trusted intermediary, elevating blockchain in the second level. And this became now an infrastructure on anything, energy, voting, e-democracy. So anything you do, you can, like the cloud, you can also do it on blockchain. So actually we have uh, the transfer of even of assets, not just of, of value or currencies. The idea is not limited to finance, anyway. Um, so blockchain is also important for social disruption. The institution building dimension is extremely challenging as well. And in the course of human history, every institutional formation had two basic ingredients, maybe until the crisis, trust and identity. The trust may be a bit lost. The identity, we have to find new ways of an e-identity. And imagine the challenges that we have here in the era of blockchain when trust is uh, the security of the code and identity is now a digital fingerprint. Perhaps it's early to evaluate the impact of technology that even the developers themselves are not sure how it will evolve. It's like a dark room, we're trying to find the limits of this technology and the developers themselves too. So every day we have a different um, uh, a different blockchain, uh, we have uh, the chain of blockchain, but now we also have different kind of blockchains uh, that make mining maybe more easy and more cheap. So, as the time is very limited, I will briefly introduce our speakers and you can find all the details you have, their CVs, their bios. I will start with Mr. Dr. Julian Hosp, the blockchain expert today with us, and let me just give you two hints about him. <coughs> he started kitesurfing and he's ending having a fintech company which transfers immediately all your cryptocurrencies into real money. So you can actually buy anything actually. I don't even know if you have to, to change it. I think you can directly go and make um, buy anything you want with his card. Thank you so much. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you.